Now this path that I got here, uh, I showed how I got it in tutorial 140 and 141. It's the tutorials on weapon meshes. Uh, just make sure you follow on those tutorials to actually get the path and how I created a weapon slot or at least a, a empty game object in my uh, model so that you can get the same path. But the, this is where the error is. Basically, it's looking through, and since I'm using a different model this time, I'm actually using an empty game object, there, so there is no hierarchy under it. It's not finding that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just underneath here, just check to see if it returned anything. So if weapon mount is equal to null, I want to do something. And I know I don't want to do anything else after this, so I'm just going to return. But I'm also going to throw out a debug log message just to let me know that while I'm building the game that, hey, you know, I can't find this weapon mount that I'm supposed to find. So I'm going to put it as a, as a debug log warning. So it shows up as yellow, gets my attention. Uh, we could not find the weapon mount. There we go. So if we go back in to Unity, I'm going to go ahead and clear the errors and we'll start it back up. And there we go. It tells me that it couldn't find the weapon mount. Uh, we, you are going to want to set that. So uh, you might as well just stop the video and go take a look at those other tutorials and see how to find it and set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and create my character. And Let's just go ahead and raise his stats a bit. And once we're done creating, we'll start it. And we're probably going to get an error because I had it hard cast to load up a level called level one. And since I'm changing it to tutorial and not everyone's going to want to have their levels named the exact same as mine, we've created that array. So there's the errors. That's no problem. So here's where we're getting the error. I'm going to come back over to my game settings and what it's trying to load is my tutorial level now. So I'm actually just going to uh, take a look here. It's index two. So we'll just go back in. Uh, we'll delete out the level one and we'll just say game settings dot. Uh, what was it? Level names and it's index two. Now, to be honest, if you had you know, more than a handful here, I would probably definitely make an enumeration and allow you to like use the enumeration name instead of the numbers. But since we only have a few, it really shouldn't matter. So let's start it back up. I guess I should make sure I saved it. And I did. So we'll go back into Unity. It started up. I'll do the exact same thing, create my character. And we'll just raise the stats again, and it should load up into the next level. And we'll move on to that level and start creating it. All right, so we hit recreate, and we notice that it saved the character, and it moved on to the next level on us. Great. We'll just save this level off. I'm going to close down my folders here. I'm going to open up my scenes. I'm going to move on to my tutorial level. All right, so now that I'm in my tutorial scene, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a terrain. Now, I'm not going to bother sculpting the terrain or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to you. There's tons of tutorials on how to create a train, and I'm pretty sure you probably already know. So I've got my train. I'm going to go in and add a character to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use character one from the Fro Games package, and I'm going to add him to the scene. And I'm just going to zoom in on them. Actually, before I zoom in on them, I'm going to add one more component. I'm going to, or sorry, game object. I'm going to add a directional light. And I'm just going to move that out of the way. Uh, I'm just going to rotate it a bit to give a bit of uh, view. I'm just going to quickly start it up. Nothing should happen. I just want to see how bright it is. All right. And I'm going to start adding the scripts to it. So for your character script, I would like just to be able to come up here and click, you know, uh, add a component uh, character scripts. And to do that, it's not too bad. Right now we have it divided into two different scripts. 
you have to add the player input script, which if you look has the required component type of advanced movement. And if we go ahead and open up the advanced movement script, which well starts A, it's up here. It's also going to add our character controller for us. Now I would also like it to add our character, our player character, which should be in our character classes. Right there. So I'm going to actually make that a, a required component of our player input. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm just going to tell it player character. This way here, when I add my advanced movement script to it, everything gets added to it. Now, I also don't want to have to come digging through here for scripts. Uh, I'm just, I want to come up here just to the component menu and get them. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go into the player input again, and I'm going to add that here. So add component menu. and a string for the menu name. So I'm just gonna say uh, player, and it's supposed to be a string, so don't forget your quotes. I'm just gonna quickly close mine off. And it's gonna be player, and the slash, I'm gonna say all player scripts. Oops, I meant to save it, not jump to the bottom. So I'll just save that off. I'm going to go back into Unity. And when I click on the component menu, after it's done recompiling, it should pop up. And there we go, right here. All player scripts. So let's select our character. And we'll just hit all player scripts. And it's telling me I'm losing my prefab, which is fine. And everything should be added to it. So we have one, two, three, four, five uh, components added onto it, not including the transform. I'm just going to shrink the transform down because we're not going to be using that. Now we'll notice here that I don't have any animations assigned to them yet. And I'm going to need some of them. Uh, so Fro Games actually includes a ton of different animations, and I'm just going to include a few of them. Uh, let's look for the walk animation. Oops, I accidentally unclicked my character. I'm going to drag this up here. Actually, I'm going to start off with, uh, well, let's just do the three basic ones. Walk, run, uh, walk, run, jump, idle. So let's do four. And I'm going to start them off with idle. And of course, by adding them up here, it automatically adds them down here, but it also adds another one. So I'm actually going to change that a bit. Oh, we'll just put it here. I don't want to do the four. Like there's a, you know, a million different animations you can add to your character. And you know you just keep adding to the ones you like. Now there is a list, if you look at the advanced movement script, of the ones that I'm using currently. Uh, I go up to the top. Just look at the documentation at the top here. Uh, my player script, I'm currently using these animations. And for the mobs, I'm currently using these ones. And we're going to do quite a bit of editing in this script, so don't worry too much about it if you haven't looked at it yet. I'm going to head back into Unity and just hurry up and get these uh, animations attached to it. So we've got idle, walk, I want run and jump next. So I'll run. And I'm just going to do jump. And there's jump right here. There we go, I have my four basic animations set up. I'm going to save that off and I'm going to take a look at the, let's see, we'll go with the player input first. Player character, there should be nothing we need to edit here. Uh, the character controller, uh, let's do that next actually. I'm going to zoom in on my character and the character controller is this little uh, green capsule you see. Now you're going to want that to encompass the most of your torso, a little bit bigger than your torso of your character. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to move the center up. I'm just going to drag it along and it looks like uh, this fits pretty good on the default size of the, the character that you get from Pro Games. Uh, it's, it's a little fat. I'm just going to shrink them up just a tad. How about there? That looks good. 
And there should be nothing else you need to do for the character controller. So we'll shrink that down now and let's move on to, well, before I get into advanced movement, because we're going to be doing a lot of edits there, uh, let's go ahead and look at the player input script first. So we'll open this up. Uh, if you take a look, I've got all the keys that you need to create in your input manager. And I uh, made a note that I start using the input manager, if you don't know how, uh, in tutorials number 89 and 90. And I've already actually gone ahead and done this here. Now, let's just quickly go over the comments here. These are the names of the keys or axes that you'll need to assign in the input manager. You get a brief description of what it is or what it's supposed to do and what type it's going to be. If it's going to be a key, an axis, uh, a mouse movement. Uh, let's go into the input manager and we'll just quickly look at a couple of them. So let's come down to edit, project settings, input manager. And we'll just start off at the top. I've got my move forward. Now move forward, any sort of movement, uh, you want it to be in axes. Uh, so we'll just start off. You got to give it its name. Uh, give it a description. You can also give it a negative description if you want, which is basically, you know, for move forward, I could have, you know, uh, the character moves forward. Uh, the description for the negative name could be the character moves backwards. But you'll want to assign the keys that you want for movement. For me, I've assigned S as being the negative, which is going to be moving me backwards and W being the key that moves me forward or the positive. Now I've also gone ahead and made alternate keys for it. And th these are the arrow keys, the down key and the up key. And since it is an axis, these other variables down here actually mean something. And if you actually hover over them, you'll get a tool tip. So gravity, alternate button to be pressed. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on the alternate. If you hover over gravity, uh, the size of the analog dead zone all analog device values with this range mapped to neutral. So you can go along and just play with these. Uh, the one that I play with most is sensitivity. And of course you can have snapping or inversion. Uh, you'll want to make sure it's set to key or mouse button. Because we'll be using the key for that. And I believe it's going to be on the Y axis. If, if it turns out it's not, we'll just change it to the X. But I'm pretty sure it's the Y axis. So that's, that's what a uh, button looks like that's going to be using one of the axes. Now let's take a look at a button. Here's a button here. Uh, and this is just basically toggles the character to run or walk. By default he runs, but if for some reason you want to walk in game, I want to be able to define a key that allows him to do that. And as you can see here, I've defined the left shift key to allow him to come out of run mode and go into walk mode or switch back into run mode. And of course I've called it run, given it a description. None of these values matter because it's a button. And I've got it down here to be a key or a mouse button. Uh, I'll quickly open these. Uh, you can just pause the video and read them if you want. But there's nothing too too hard. If you watch those two, two, two uh, tutorials, you should be able to uh, do whatever you want with the input manager. Uh, the most X and most Y actually come with uh, the input manager by default. Uh, I haven't implemented most scroll wheel yet, but I imagine I will be. And Windows Shake X and Windows Shake Y I haven't used yet, and I haven't even actually looked to see what they do, but they just sounded cool, so I left them. And character toggle window. Uh, rotate camera button. Now I'm using my number, the number pad on my keyboard for these. And I'll have to take a look just to be sure, but I believe that all you have to do is encase it in the square brackets. If not, I'll just quickly look it up just to make sure. And then I'll add it into the comments as well. Uh, and the reset camera and jump comes default too. So there we go. Let's go back into the script, and I believe that's the only thing you have to do to this script. So I'm just going to close that down. I'm going to go back into advanced movement, and if we open it up again, we'll take a look at the animations that we have. Now, I haven't implemented a lot of these on this model. Uh, this model doesn't even have a lot of these. So for instance, he doesn't have a swim. Uh, I haven't checked to see if he has a, a, a strafing animation. I know he has a turning animation that could probably be used for it. But I haven't actually looked at all the animations on this model. But I wanted to actually start changing some of the way the script works. 
And the way I want it to work now is, well, let's just select it. I'll make sure everything's shrunk down, the advanced movement. Here we go. I actually want to expose uh, animation clips over here. So you can actually, instead of dragging them up here, uh, you can drag them whatever animation you want over here. The way we have it set up now is you have to have the animation named exactly uh, what we're calling. So let's just go down and start taking a look at one. So for instance, our jump animation, we actually call it jump. And let's say your animation clip was not called jump, it's not going to work. And because, you know, people following the tutorial speak different languages, they're going to be having different uh, names for their animation. So there's idle, uh, there's going to be a walk and a run somewhere in here too. But that's one of the things I want to add to this script.